And what's up, everybody? It's your boy Uchi. And my gummy worm in his mouth, brother Uchi. And we are back again. Once again. How y'all doing today? Today is a kind of important video, especially since it's not a reaction. This is basically a continuation of the discussion that we were having on yesterday's reaction, episode 86 of Dragon Ball Super. And like we said, we wanted to do a whole video just for this, so we're going to try to get to our points as quickly as possible. As you see in the title, it is basically around the state of where Dragon Ball Super lies and the future after the tournament of power is finished will gt happen well before we get into all of that we're going to talk about a couple things as regards to what's going on right now with android 17. A couple things. So Android 17, the reason why we're gonna start off with him is it's gonna, trust me, this is transitional. Things are gonna lead into the next topic, to the next topic, and then we're gonna get to where GT stands. So number one, for those that didn't know, androids, or better known as artificial humans, for those that are confused, they're not really androids. You can think of them as like cyborgs, kind of like that one dude in One Punch Man, except these guys started as humans. How do androids have babies? As it so happens, and she started out as a human being. Dr. Jiro just remodeled her a little bit. And it goes on record that Akira Toriyama himself did say that they get stronger over time. But just because it's been such a long time since we've seen Android 17 on Dragon Ball, that alone can't really sustain like the reasoning behind why he's been so strong. And plus, he has been protecting an island full of animals. But really, how is he that strong? And I have come up with an idea. He has been low-key training with Vegeta. Are you kidding me? Yeet. <laughs> Hear me out. In episode 86 of Dragon Ball Super, he goes on to say, as soon as Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, so you can transform into that too. Now we can interpret this in one of two ways. The first way, this is an assumption and speculation that 17 has a power-up of his own that he is hiding and you can actually lead on to believing that after towards the end of their fight they confirm to each other that they have something up their sleeve that they're hiding and obviously they're gonna save that for the tournament of power they're not revealing that to each other just yet but the fact that he said it like that you can take it in this way that he has already seen such a form before Literally taken into context, it makes perfect sense. But that's some bullshit. <laughs> Why do you dispute this? The way he said two, it, I mean, that always, that doesn't mean that he saw it from somebody else. It can just mean that it's a different transformation than other things. I know what you're saying, but I doubt it's Vachita because Vachita's, he's, he's up in the air. And that's the thing. He's been up in the air. He's been around. He hasn't been where Goku has been as of recently. And yes, he has been attentive to his wife because he's about to be a daddy again for his second child. But that remains to be seen. The fact that we have no idea. There's moments in Dragon Ball Super that take place where it's just focused on a certain amount of characters. Are we wrong for thinking that meanwhile these things are happening, other things could be happening at the same time? This makes perfect sense. The fact that Goku and Vegeta are the only two Saiyans on Earth in the universe that can perform such a power up. He said too, I believe that he's been low key training with Vegeta. They used Dende to find 17. Without him, they, they weren't gonna find him. I don't know how Vegeta could have done that. Sh well, I mean, unless they bumped into each other somehow, but I doubt that. Exactly. Well, like That's I said, it's, it's somewhat of a stretch. Not really. It does make a little bit of sense if you think about it, but let's keep on with the video. The second thing I wanted to bring up, you notice how Android 17 confirmed that he had three kids. He said one of them was his own and two were adopted. And this man's gained some cheese because he has a wife. <laughs> what if I told you Oob was one of his kids? Get the f out of here, bro. <laughs> Hear me out on this reasoning. So first, in the, the beginning of the episode, when they're about to go look for Android 17, Dende just brings up Oob. Mm -hmm. 
there's a child that's a genius and that Goku should train him in the future when he's older so that way he can harness and realize the power that he has because he is confirmed the reincarnation of the evil Majin Buu. So they bring that up. Meanwhile, this whole episode, it's about Finding 17. They bring up Oob to, I believe, plant the seed, as I put it. So that way it's refreshed in our, on our mind and the possibility that that might be the direction where we go into after the Tournament of Power. He even shows Goku on his phone, but they don't show the viewers what his phone has. I really believe that one of those kids, whether it's his own biological son or it's one of his adopted kids, I believe Oob is one of those yeah, children. But Oob was at that village. Like his poor village. Yeah. I don't know how... Yeah, he, he was at his poor village. I'm glad you bring that up because that's a very true point. We, at some point in the storyline of Dragon Ball, have seen Oob's mentioned village. However... His wife may live there, yeah. Exactly! But I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Because Andrew 17 does not live on that island. He, yeah. he literally said it himself. I don't live here. I just go here to protect the animals, blah, 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 blah. Keep that in mind, the possibility that that actually might be a thing. And finally, will GT actually happen? I'm probably gonna have to reference my notes a lot for this one because I did write a bit. Why should GT happen in the first place? Well, I feel like it shouldn't just be forgotten. I don't think it should just be DELETED. I think that regardless of how obsolete people think Dragon Ball GT was, I really feel like if they did it right and they took all the cons away and then just brought upon the pros, this could actually be something worth for everybody. And especially for us fans in the long run, this is the perfect opportunity to just take what was good and then add on some new plot points and some new elements to the storyline that GT didn't have, but to basically rectify retcon the series so that way it's not labeled as a non-canon thing. Some of the bad things that they can keep out. Kid Goku. Vegeta's goddamn haircut. Thank you for that, brother Ooch. <laughs> Dragon Ball Hunt. I mean, with the Super Dragon Balls, there's really no need for Black Star Dragon Balls yeah, anymore. Sure. And maybe some of the Shenrons. I didn't really leave that out as a bad thing because if they did kept the Shenrons, then that means that they could basically remodel some of them to make them look a little bit more appealing. Because everyone's favorite ones was like a Mega Shenron and Nova Shenron. Nova Shenron, he had that correlation with the Four Star Dragon Ball and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Some of the good that they can keep: Super 17, Baby Vegeta. The Shenrons, Super Saiyan 4, and most importantly, Gochita. Because Gochita is only known as a fusion character in the movies, which in the movie is considered non canon. They might perform it in the tournament of power. That, I mean, hey, we don't know that yet. We don't know if they'll even think that far into it and then they, they plan on doing the fusion dance so that way they can be, they can reveal a Gochita. But that still remains to be seen because that could just be a rule or not even a rule, but just something that we might have thought of as the fans. We might think, oh, they used Patara to make Vegito, so the fusion dance must create another person. I don't know. What if it's just a Vegito? Boy. And if it's just a natural way to access the character, let's just keep on going with this discussion. And a lot of people already want to assume that even if they do bring along Super Saiyan 4, they assume that there's no point because Super Saiyan Blue is already confirmed to be the strongest form. And yes, to a degree, you're right. It is the strongest form as we know it right now and in sequential order since it happens after super saiyan 3 you would automatically assume that it would be stronger than a super saiyan 4 yeah but since super saiyan 4 happens way after the fact in a saga that is still remain to be seen as canonical or not if they take super saiyan 4 and use this form the right way that means that they can utilize this against opponents foes villains that we have not seen and that could be crazy strong. And what if the God Key isn't good enough? Because remember, the Tournament of Power, there are universes that are not even involved in the tournament because they are so strong that they are exempt. Mm -hmm. And knowing how Goku thinks, he's gonna wanna fight these guys. He's gonna wanna put himself to the test to become the strongest he possibly can. And I feel like if they take that known fact and apply it to this GT 
bring back retcon situation, they can really have a reason to bring this new form. Because what if God Key isn't enough and these new foes are basically almost, it makes no difference to them whether they do it or not and they have to access a new form. And then they bring in Super Saiyan 4 and Super Saiyan form looking good in HD but, anime. But hold up, but hold up. To do Super Saiyan 4, he needs his tail. Okay. And they would have to bring that back. Well, considering how Dragon Ball as it is already has a lot of plot holes, what if they don't even bring in the tail? Well, yeah, that, that's it. But then they would have to make GT like not even a thing. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Well, let's not use GT anymore. Let's just use what I call it in the title of this video Dragon Ball Super Z or Z Super, however, whatever way it rolls off the tongue for y'all. Let's just call it Super Z. And I'll get to that last why I decided to call it Super Z. But back to Super Saiyan 4. If they bring in Super Saiyan 4, that means that he now has another power up on top of his already previous power-up. Like we saw him use Kaioken as a booster? Think of Naruto. Naruto has his Jinchuriki chakra and then he has his sage mode. What if they start doing stuff like that? Because I mean, we've already seen a lot of things taken and borrowed from other animes in Super alone. Zamasu had freaking Susano in one episode. Like imagine, imagine Super Saiyan 4 with God Key control. Boy. You can really have such an illustrious imagination when you think of the possibilities if they decide to do these things this way or they just do them better. I'm not saying that this is going to happen by all means. I'm just trying to be creative in what they could do to basically bring in elements from GT and make it work for the future of Dragon Ball Super, AKA Dragon Ball Super Z. Now, why am I calling it Dragon Ball Super Z? The reason why I'm calling it Dragon Ball Super Z, once we get to the tournament where Oob makes his debut and we are at the end point of the 10 year gap that's currently taking place right now, that is a Dragon Ball Z portion of the storyline. So that means everything right now, you can call it Super. You can even argue that the resurrection of F and the God of Destruction, the Beerus arcs, those can also be counted as Dragon Ball Z considering the movies have the DBZ title in the movies and Super just did them just to do them. Those are exceptions. You can consider those DBZ or Dragon Ball Super. You're not going to hurt my feeling to be completely honest. But once we get to this end point of the 10 year gap, that means that we are in Dragon Ball Z territory. And obviously, if they're going to continue doing Dragon Ball Super, then what better way than to call it Dragon Ball Super Z, Dragon Ball Z Super, aside from calling it Dragon Ball GT, because I'm sure a a lot of people would rather them not just call it Dragon Ball GT because it has a bad taste in people's mouth. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's basically my reasoning behind calling it uh, Dragon Ball Super Z. I hope this video kind of opened you guys' eyes up a little bit. The potential of them bringing in elements of GT, the potential of where the storyline could go after the Tournament of Power into the end point of this 10 year gap that we're currently in. Another thing to kind of add, it's also not officially confirmed that just because they brought up Oob that that's all immediately where they're going to next. For all we know, they could do something else after the Tournament of Power before Oob. Until we get to that point, that's literally the only time we'll be able to tell. What'd you think? Good. Alright. <laughs> I have some good, good leads. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add? Or you think? Was 17 at the, the tournament? No. The only time we ever saw 17 after Cell was in GT. All right, guys, so let me know what you guys think about all this. Like, share, subscribe, hit us up on Twitter and Discord, especially on Discord. Remember, there is a Dragon Ball Super Fan Art contest. All you have to do is join the Discord and submit your art on the Dragon Ball Super Fan Art panel, and we'll vote for which ones we think are the best ones and get yourself a shout-out right here on the next reaction for Dragon Ball Super. And we'll see y'all next time. Yeah!